and we are back. You are chatting with John P. Today we are going to be talking about how the exotic skins, leathers, and furs bill that was recently passed in California in the United States is going to be affecting the luxury goods and specifically luxury watch industry because I do think it is going to do a whole lot of damage but I think that there are some ways that the brands can kind of overcome these challenges of a changing time and a changing mindset in the United States. But once again, thank you so much for coming back for another episode. I really do appreciate it. Hopefully you all out there are enjoying the holidays. Christmas and all the other holidays that are out there. So hopefully you're having a lot of fun and visiting some friends and family with all of that. And of course, it's about to be New Year's, so looking forward to that. On the wrist, I have my uh, <laughs> my Omega Seamaster ceramic bezel blue. It looks black in this light, but it is the blue. I love this thing on the rubber. I'm really grabbing this for everyday casual wear. I really love these things. I recommend them a whole lot. Today, we're not in the studio. We're actually getting some work done out there. Um, it's actually my office here. We have uh, some seating, some little gear back there. So a little glimpse into uh, what we do here at DelrayWatch.com. So let's jump into the topic. What is going on with exotic leathers, skins, alligator, crocodile predominantly? Here's the deal. California released a bill not too long ago within the last few months and they signed it into law and essentially uh, it was, there's more history to that. Apparently the state of California has tried and has successfully banned, but there's been some extensions um, to the banning of these exotic leathers with a main focus and the, a site on the alligator and crocodile, which is a pretty large industry in the United States and places like Louisiana and Texas. And so what this law pretty much says is that January 1st, 2020, so literally in a few days, it is illegal to import specifically for commercial reasons, or they use a couple of different words, but basically it has to do with the commerce of these now protected or illegal goods in California. So you can't import these goods and you can't sell them or have them to sell. Um, and there's more, le there's more legislation and legal jargon when it comes to also the furs because some of the activist groups like PETA really had their sights on things like mink furs and some of the others because they're so, not only because they're so expensive, but it's like a, a glorified thing. So you'll see in the news where, you know, paint will get thrown on celebrities while they're walking down the street and these like 30 thousand dollar coats uh, of furs but so what we have is you know you have the law and the law is pretty much saying you know anything that has to do with the business or the commerce or the import of these exotic leathers into the state of California is in fact illegal and there are some fines apparently there's also some jail time I guess probably they re will reserve that the legal system will reserve the jail time for those that are you know somehow importing these in bulk and selling them and so what we have by this legislation is we have the brands, the boutiques, honestly pretty scared. And you know, it's not that there's a fear, in my opinion, from the brands. It's not that there's a fear that they're going to stop selling their products, right? Because the brands aren't, you know, making their brand from the leathers in relation to the watch industry. Talking about, you know, things like Hermes, that's a whole nother story, bags and, and belts and, and what have you. But when we're talking about watch straps, aside from watch strap manufacturers, the watch brands, more to them, it's a logistical problem, right? They have all these watches on the shelves, on the boutiques, and authorized dealers, right? The authorized dealers already bought these watches from the brands. Authorized dealers own them, but they're selling them pretty much in the image of the brands, with the exception of a few brands out there. And so what you have is just a logistical nightmare, and it's something that had to be, that had to be solved within a few months, and really people are only talking about it widespread today and so there's a couple of brands out there and they do have a process right specifically rolex's process is if you bring the watch in and for some reason you you bought one of their cellinis which is not a ton of people out there compared to the stainless steel uh sports models they have but if you bought one of their cellinis or something like that it came on an alligator or crocodile it's going to be illegal they will replace it with a calf alternative if they have it if not if it's in a certain time period, they will allow you to return it, but you'll have to reach out directly to Rolex and ask about that. I've talked to some ADs and there is a little bit of a process, but it's not as clear cut and defined that some of the brands have it. For example, 
there was a flyer circulating around in the watch dealer community about Vacheron and Vacheron has a formal letter and process where they uh, they pretty much do just what I told you. There's a, a process to return it or they can put a, an alternative, right? Some brands have tons of alternatives. So when we think about it, it's not the worst. Sure, are there some watches out there that just look better to some people on crocodile and alligator? Yes, absolutely. But when you consider that, and let's say all the brands do overcome the logistical nightmares, because they will, they're all run by people that are somewhat intelligent at the least, right? I mean, these are large corporations that are owning these companies. It's not mom and pop trying to figure out what to do today. You know, it's, it's nothing like that. You know, they're run very professionally, the brands, especially at the higher level. So they're gonna figure this out, of course, right? And a lot of them already have. But what does this mean for the luxury watch industry and the luxury industry? Considering the way that the legislation is actually written, just by the way that I'm looking at it, I'm not a lawyer, but it looks like there are some loopholes and some exemptions. I won't say that I'm advocating any of this, but let's say that you're a high-end watch collector in California and you just want to have that crocodile or alligator strap on your very expensive watch. Well, chances are you're somewhat affluent. You have enough money to travel, right? Now, I think it's going to be extremely difficult for them to kind of enforce this law and these rules on people when there's just so much interstate, out of state, out of nation, out of country commerce where I don't think they can hold it all back. And what this does is it actually makes that product even more luxurious, right? If there's a lower amount of it floating around, just like we see with a lot of watches, including Rolex stainless steel sports models, which is a whole nother topic and a whole nother topic I do not want to resurface before the end of the year. Um, it, it just, there's less of it and the demand's still going to be there because not everyone is caring about these animals. I think it's, it is a horrible thing sometimes the way these animals are treated and how they're farmed. It can be it can be a little bit over the top, especially when incentivized by financial reasons by some companies. There's ethical ways and there's unethical or unethical ways. Um, and so it, it can be kind of a, a gross thing, especially when they release these videos. So, you know, setting aside the morals and people just like these products, well, they're gonna find them, right? If you're a guy in California, you collect, you go to New York on vacation, what are you gonna do? You, you go to the boutiques, you're a watch guy, you're a watch collector, you're gonna buy the strap there. You know, maybe you can't have it shipped to your home in Los Angeles or San Francisco, but you can drive to Washington or you can drive over the border or you can go other places. Not saying you should because this is not a legal advice channel, but people will do it. And you know, even if it becomes illegal in the entire nation, people go out of the country. It's a very international world. So I think the gesture is very nice. So I think that it probably will cut down somewhat on some of this uh, farming that you see videos, you know, farming these animals just for the skins and, you know, mistreating the animals and this and that. It'll probably cut down on some of that and it's a nice gesture, but it's just going to create a bit of a nightmare for a while in California. It's going to, you know, create a lot of buzz. We're going to make videos like this talking about it and these items will become more luxurious in California. If the laws kind of trickle out towards the East Coast, like a lot of times they do, things start out there and kind of move their way over. Sure, maybe in 30 years, you know, alligator and crocodile will be banned across the country for all purposes. And in which case, if you just had to have it, you could get it from outside the country. And in that case, it's on your back. Or perhaps the alternatives will become so good, it will be indistinguishable from the real thing, right? You have things like alternative meats out there where they have meats that are uh, all you know, fake, basically fake meats that are flavored uh, to taste just like meat, perhaps someone or a brand will come out with some type of false leather that looks, behaves, and is almost indistinguishable in the naked eye from the real thing, right? So this could be a big business opportunity for someone as well, especially the brands that look forward and have that kind of future vision to kind of keep up with the times. The brands that do this are always the most successful brands. And so when we consider perhaps like a brand like Moser, who's very forward thinking, very cutting edge, very youthful, especially in their advertising, hey Moser, maybe this is an opportunity for you to invest in some alternative leathers and really kind of fill the either the current or the potential demand 
due to the recent legislation about the banning of these exotic materials. So guys, watch guys, what do you think about this? One, does it really affect you? Do you really care? You can still buy calf leather, um, which is a whole nother conversation, right? Like why are we determining which animals have more value alive than not you know the calves are still dying so i'm not sure how that works uh be determining what's exotic and what's not because the cap leather is not banned so what do you guys think about that as well i would love to hear it and if anyone's out there that lives in california what do you plan on doing do you have any experiences with the dealers would love to hear it in the comments below and i'm sure everyone else would as well guys it's about to be new year's eve hopefully you ha all have a very good new year's new year's eve and it's a great year for everyone in 2020 see you in 2020 you have been chatting with john p ciao